Imagine in front of you there's a box. And on top of that box, there's a thing that says Caltech, usually embossed into it. And you open that case. We're playing theater of the mind here. You open that case, and inside of it, close your eyes for four seconds. Three, two, one. You find one of these. Wow, that's a weird way to hold it. There we go. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Sorry. This is the Caltech CP33. For those of you that don't know, Caltech is a corporation that, while I doubt they would admit it, is probably the single largest corporation consumer of cocaine on the eastern seaboard. Because what happens is, they have these meetings, right? And on Monday, somebody, and you don't know who, because plausible deniability, somebody has to bring at least a brick of cocaine. And it has to be good stuff. You can't have something that's cut with baby powder or maybe has too much fentanyl in it. No, they, they get the good stuff. And everybody at the table has to do a line every 10 minutes until they come up with a good idea. So it's an incentive and a bonus. At least that's what I imagine the pitch meetings for a lot of their guns go like. I might be wrong. There's always a 5% chance I'm completely off base here. But yes, whoever put their face into the pile of cocaine and came up with this thing, I salute you, buddy. This is a 22 caliber pistol that's functionally a rifle-ish. It looks bizarre because of the way it runs, and it's actually a really fun gun. If you've never shot one of these, I highly encourage you to spend some time with one because this is a 33-round quad-stacked 22 long rifle. All right, enough fun stuff. Let's actually talk about the firearm. So, mostly polymer down here. It has an aluminum top on here, and it obviously has a metal, probably a light steel, not like a stainless steel, but a steel bolt with the extractor built into it. It uses a charging handle, a la handa? handle, like a Ruger or an AR. So that's kind of cool. It's easy to grab, easy to manipulate. You can see it's all pick rail up top with some fiber optic sights. Has spot on the bottom for a bit of rail. This gun was used, so it did not come with it. Uh, and it's got one of those MTM covers on it. That's kind of cool. So you could definitely mount a uh, piece of rail there. Back here, you will see that it is not an American style release because it uses so many rounds, much like the PMR 30, that you can actually just live with that. Also, honestly, reloads, not hard. Except for when you do them wrong. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, the European release would have been just as easy, but I understand them having a heel release. It allows them to maximize all the space up here, although 22 long rifle doesn't require a lot of space. It is striker fired. That's why I have a mag loaded with snap caps. Also, I wanted to show you how the magazine loads. It's a uh, one and a half to quad stack. So each side has a different design on the follower, but as it starts to load down here, you can see they're starting to twist in there. It basically does that all the way down. So it's basically a quad stack. It's like a two and a half to three and a half stack. Really weird, but it does seem to work. The only thing I don't like is the full polymer magazine. I guess since it's 22 long rifle, it won't beat it up too bad, but I actually have a funky ass like space pistol that has a plastic mag and I can't use the gun because the magazine broke and I don't want to spend $500 for another gun to get a mag. So that is interesting. Uh, has Caltech standard design here. You got the uh, squares. It's a polymer frame so you could get it stippled or just put really good grip tape on it and you'd be good to go. Has an external manual ambidextrous safety which is kind of neat. So as you can see, easy to sweep on, easy to sweep off. Has a lot of screws holding it together. These are screw builds, and that's perfectly fine. If you like that, great. The thing winds up being very light, although I gotta say, um, it's only slightly lighter than this Staccato clone or Springfield Prodigy clone in the Gerson. And, well, this is much lighter because this is a Smith & Wesson, uh, no, excuse me, this is the Ruger LR9XBDFM2 um, LCRX. I don't know how to read. That'll be coming up in another video. But yeah, it's pretty interesting. I like that Caltech gives you some toys right out of the box. You got fiber optic rear and a fiber optic front. That looks very similar to the same one you can put on a tortoise. 
although it looks to be screw held down, so don't quote me on that. Front side is a green offset from the red rear, which is easier to pick up, especially in bright light. Easy for me to see and pick up. Uh, I don't know what the vents are for. They're not really useful. Again, this is a used gun. That is not for me launching it into space. Uh, and no trigger safety because it's got the external manuals. The external disables the trigger. I'm going to put a snap cap in it so that when I pull the trigger, you guys don't lose your shizits. Yeah, I said shizits. And as you can see, it easily loads the 22s. They can be a little bit picky. Some of these guns are a little picky on ammo. Um, I don't know if I'm going to buy this one, but if I did, it'd be kind of interesting. Also, because it has a party trick we'll talk about in a minute. But yeah, single action. So once you pull the trigger, the gun is dead. So you do need to... Oh, it didn't grab that one. Hey, and now we have a misfeed. Hey, now we have a multiple misfeeds. Uh, yeah. There you go. Uh, the bolt, I just didn't pull it right, so that was my fault. But once you reset the gun, chamber another round, goes bang. There we go. Let's see what the reset feels like. Pretty much all the way out, and then goes bang again. Ooh, you being a pain in my patootski. The only downside... Oh, we can lock the bolt open. The only downside to this style is that the... Uh, there we go. The uh, bolt is harder to lock back, although I was able to do it pretty easily. There you go. Come on. Mm. Does not like to release. That could just be me. But yeah, overall, it feels pretty good. Boink, goes right in. Let's see. Oh, come on. Yeah, that launched it. Yeah, so that works pretty good. Now, I am not going to be taking this one apart because I have not done a full disassembly review on it. Also, it's not mine. Sorry, I'm reaching down for snap caps that flew off. But what I am going to do is show you an interesting thing with this particular firearm. Now, as you know, I have a suppressor. Now, I only have one right now. I'm working on getting a few more, but they take time, energy, money. Are you subscribed yet? If you get subscribed, you can help me cover that last part. Become a member, leave me a gift, all that fun stuff, and then you can help uh, influence the channel a little bit too. But my particular suppressor of choice is the Osprey 9. Now, it is by definition of the name a 9mm suppressor. However, shooting 22 out of a longer barrel like this, because that's a 5.5 inch barrel plus the suppressor, and if you're using subsonic ammo, not 100% sure it's going to knock that thing back, but if you're doing that, oh, that's going to be so fun. Probably pretty quiet, and if you notice, it sits so low on the gun that you can use the fiber optic sights without having to run a red dot. Although you could put a red dot on here if you want more accuracy because these are actually pretty good out to like 50 to 70 yards, 75 yards if you use them the right ammunition, some high speed stuff. But yeah, I thought that was kind of cool and I wanted to show you guys that. I don't own many suppressor host capable guns because obviously I didn't own suppressors until this year. So anytime I got something with a threaded barrel, I pretty much got rid of them right away just because they were only video fodder. But yeah, having messed with that, it, it's really cool. Um, it makes me want to pick one of these up. I'm not sure how well a 22 Magnum will go through the 9mm suppressor. So I've got to do a little bit of research on that. But this is also technically a fixed barrel, so you, I would need to change the adapter. Although the odds of a 22 baffle striking is much lower. Actually, I'm going to empty that mag out. Because these are actually the snap caps for my revolver. Yay. Oh, it's empty. Okay, cool. So anyways, I know you like these things being raw and unedited. Uh, some of you like them edited, and I've been paying for Adobe Express since 2017, so I should really start editing these damn videos. But uh, that's a after the first of the year decision. If you guys want me to start doing that, I'd be more than happy to start editing the videos, especially the couch tops. But I need you guys to prove that you want me to do that by subscribing. Hitting that little red button down in the corner will definitely help. So I'll come back for another video. I love you guys so much. You're so beautiful. And as always, I'll talk to you later.